Hi everybody, today I'm going to bring you along as I check on my No Grit Bin 2023. If you are new to my worm farm, I am into myth-busting worm farm dogma. This experiment has been evolving for about three years, and this time I started with 100 red wiggler cocoons on October 17th. So after four months, I have started to see full-size worms and also brand new cocoons. So I think that the new generation is not only growing, but thriving. So let's get looking in here. Last time we fed a half of a pumpkin. Now, looking at this experiment, um, many people uh, go and start looking at worms and think that they are like birds. Oh, here's a brand new good sized cocoon, look at that. You know, they do have a crop and a gizzard like birds do, but one of the things that I think has been making these worms so successful is that perhaps uh, because they get fed very soft food that has been frozen or just foods that are what we would consider fast food, and that is maybe why we are seeing such success in the spin. I'm absolutely not saying that you should not feed your worms grit because in every other bin that I have, oh wow, look at all these cocoons. And these are really good size cocoons. Uh, generally, the size of the cocoon is, uh, you know, determined by the size of the worm that produces it. So very young worms will have very small cocoons and the older and the larger the worm, the larger the cocoon. So these are not the cocoons I put in there in October. These are brand new ones. So I'm willing to bet we're gonna find some good size worms in here. All right, so I'm going to very gingerly pull things back so we can find if there is any uh, food left, because that is how I determine how often to feed my worm bins in general, is, you know, if I don't find any food left, then I know that I am feeding, I'm not overfeeding at the very least. This worm bin is getting a bit wet, so I think I'm gonna leave the lid off of this this time. And I am continuing to find tons and tons of cocoons. So they are definitely in the breeding mood. Spring is in the air. Wow, and there's two more. I just can't believe this. They're going nuts in here. Okay, so down to the end on this side. We did feed in the middle, but I am gonna check the sides. They are making castings, but they're, you know, it is, you know, there's not that many worms here. But, like I said, it looks like I've got some very good size worms in here for a red wiggler. Come on, buddy. That is that is very good size. And you can tell by the clitellum whoop, in a cocoon right next door. This is a swollen clit clitellum, which generally means that they are have been breeding or are going to have a cocoon very soon. So put him back over there. And let's see what we've got left from the pumpkin last time. And here's another good size worm here. We only started out with 100 cocoons, so um, depending upon who laid the cocoons, there could be, you know, one to, you know, quite a few babies in each cocoon. And they are just going nuts breeding because there is such a low population density in here that they are just trying to uh, meet the carrying capacity of this bin. So I don't know, we are not gonna go through and, and count them all, but the every worm I'm finding is, is breeding age here. So, so far I think we're up to maybe finding 10, but I'm not really seeing much of anything in the way of food. This looks like some peppers. I'm seeing some seeds from the pumpkin. They've uh, found, made a little frilly hat with one of the peppers. Okay, so it, it's uh, good that I'm getting in here right now because it looks like they are absolutely going to need some more food. So let's move that dry top castings or bedding over and we'll see what's going over on this side. We didn't feed over here, but I am going to try and look and see what we've got for worms, what size they are, and then also the moisture of the bin, which is getting pretty darn wet. Those onion peels, very slow food. Um, they've probably been here for two or three months. 
they will eat them. It's not that they won't eat them. A lot of times people are like, they don't like it. Well, I don't think worms have preferences, or not preferences, but likes or dislikes. There's, you know, I can eat it or I cannot eat it. And at this point in the bin's age, uh, there's not enough microbe, you know, and also friends in here that can help them out eat tough food. So being that they can't eat the tough food, you know, they're just going to have to wait for it to break down on its own before they can slurp up the nutrients. Okay, so I think we're going to feed over on one side here because I am going to give them a rather big feeding because they did manage to go through that whole pumpkin well before I got here. So let me get them a bag of food. Please give a muddy thumb up to these hardworking worms. Also, if you're ready to ditch the landfill and mine black gold in your worm bins, then why not subscribe to this channel for more myth busting and tips and tricks for worm farming. Okay. These kitchen scraps are not going to be as easy to eat as uh, their previous food. We've got an avocado, we've got some tortilla shells, looks like bread, and then I think this is some cabbage. So this should take them a good long time to eat. So I'm going to cover that up really, really well because we're going to go without a lid right now. So if you like this experiment or you like the myth busting, this experiment in particular has its own playlist, which I will link right over there. And if you've already seen all of those, YouTube thinks you're going to like this video right over here. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and everybody have a good day.